performance, optimization, speed, FPS. These are all important considerations when looking at your next game engine. I'm Gene, and welcome to Mean Gene Hacks. Last time we looked at the performance of Godot compared to the Unity game engine and found out that the Unity physics could handle significantly more rigid bodies than Godot. In fact, several thousand more. In this video, we're going to take another look at Godot's physics performance, this time using a physics server to eliminate the overhead of handling nodes and compare it to Unity's data-oriented technology or DOTS physics. Before we start, I need to address something from the last video. Several of you noticed that the cubes in Godot were overlapping with each other. This was due to a bug where I had the mesh size at twice the collision shape size. It had no effect on performance, so I didn't bother redoing the videos. We left off at 1,750 cubes being the most my rig could handle in Godot. So here's that run again with the mesh size fixed. And the end result is about 6 FPS in both cases. Godot features a very powerful node-based system, but it's this very system that is potentially preventing us from achieving full performance in this case. Take a look at this node structure. The cube container spatial node has, as its children, every cube rigid body node, and this can potentially be hundreds or thousands of nodes that need to be managed. Additionally, each cube rigid body has a collision shape node as its child. I think you see where I'm going with this. The overhead of just managing all those nodes could potentially be quite high. And it is this very overhead that we're trying to avoid by using a physics server on Godot and programmatically instantiating the rigid bodies. Unity has recently implemented a data-oriented technology stack, or DOTS, which uses an entity component system along with jobs and a burst compiler to move away from game objects which are the node equivalents in Unity. So here's a project redone using a Godot physics server. What's notable is there are no more cube rigid body nodes visible on the inspector. They've been instantiated in code and are being managed manually by the physics server. So let's test performance. And disappointingly, a Godot physics server with 1750 cubes is barely a few FPS faster than all those cubes spawned as nodes. Christopher Sunbaum left a comment on my last video about how tweaking the physics jitter setting in Godot gave him better performance. Maybe this will help. So what exactly is this physics jitter fix setting in Godot? Well, I found the original pull request in GitHub, and it appears to be using hysteresis for smoothing out the physics update frequency. According to the author, a high physics jitter fix setting will hide high low spikes that cause frame drops for a while anyway. He also warned of weird slow motion effects followed by a speed up when the load goes back to normal. Well, in the case of falling blocks, the load will never go back to normal. He also suggests that using values under two should be safe. This value appears to set the maximum deviation in number of frames allowed by the game clock and real clock. The last commenter had his set to 400, so let's give that a shot. Immediately, we realize a performance boost with 2,000 cubes now on screen at once. The physics server implementation seems to be ever so slightly faster than the node-based one. Upping the count to 3,000 cubes initially looks good, but Godot eventually breaks down as the tower of cubes collapses and the FPS drops to a stuttering 3 frames per second. Even with 3,000 nodes, it doesn't seem the overhead of a node-based implementation has much effect on performance. So have we pushed Godot to its limits? Is it time to take a look at Unity and see how it compares? We'll take a look at Unity's performance in comparison a little later in this video. However, I want to acknowledge something that a few commenters brought up in the last video. That the collision interactions between Unity and Godot were different, and that could be part of the reason that the performance was different between the two platforms. Going forward, we need to come up with a benchmark that is as reproducible and has common collision interactions between the two. So instead of a tower collapse, I will be spawning cubes at the same height until we see the FPS drop below 30 to hopefully give us a better apples to apples comparison. And here we go. On the left we have the node implementation, and on the right is the physics server. 
A new cube is spawned every 5 milliseconds and will keep track of when the FPS drops below 30. The total maximum number of cubes is 2950, which is when the experiment will end. Already both implementations have slowed significantly, with the node-based version dropping below 30 FPS at 2,877 cubes and the physics server doing a little bit better, only dropping below 30 FPS at 2,894 cubes. The physics server completed the benchmark about 6 seconds faster than the node version. But why aren't we seeing a bigger performance boost by getting rid of the overhead of managing the nodes? Let's dig into the code. Every 5 milliseconds, the spawn cubes function gets called. We can see an inner cube object gets instantiated inside this function and we also create a rigid body on the physics server. The inner cube class is a very lightweight GDScript class that holds an int and an RID value. Even so, we normally don't want to be instantiating tons of objects during runtime and often use an object pool to mitigate the lag that this can cause. So I tried pre-allocating all the objects and rigid bodies and setting them as disabled, and then enabling them one at a time as they are created in the scene. This actually resulted in a lower performance, probably because even though the rigid body started disabled, the physics server still had nearly 3,000 of them in memory and there was some type of overhead associated with this. The second observation is the physics process method which gets called 50 times a second. Here we loop through a list of all the bodies and because we are using a multi-mesh instance we need to update the transform of the meshes with that of the physics bodies on each physics frame. I tried rewriting this loop and the spawn cubes function in C sharp to see if it results in faster performance. Here is the comparison between the physics server with the code rewritten in c -sharp on the left versus GDScript on the right. What I find interesting is that up until about 2,700 or so rigid bodies, the performance is very similar between the two. It's only after that that the c -sharp implementation really takes off. It does seem like GDScript suffers from a bit more overhead when iterating through large arrays. The c -sharp version has already finished at about 22 and a half seconds, with GDScript still struggling along at 2 FPS. The c -sharp version is nearly 22 seconds faster than the GDScript implementation, but most of that time difference comes in the last 100 or so cubes. I think we've reached the limits of Godot at near 3000 cubes. It's time to take a look at Unity. Okay, so my spawning code was a bit different between the traditional Unity implementation with game objects versus when I coded up the dots version, but that doesn't really matter. What we're really concerned with is how many physics objects the engine can handle before the frame rate drops significantly. Both versions can easily deal with a few thousand rigid bodies. But already we see that DOTS is maintaining a higher frame rate as the number of physics objects increases. And it's only a matter of time before the game object implementation falls flat. It was able to handle about 7,500 objects before dipping below 30 FPS but the DOTS implementation is still going strong. All right, I'm gonna speed up this part of the video, but what's amazing is the frame rate of the DOTS version is holding steady and only dropping slightly as we add more and more cubes. The Unity DOTS version doesn't even consistently drop below 30 FPS until we reach over 20,000 physics objects on screen at the same time. Here's a 25,000 cube tower using dots, and the frame rate stays above 20 nearly the entire time. Something like this just isn't possible right now in Godot, even when utilizing a physics server and all the other optimizations. And 
done just for fun, 50,000 cubes pushing Unity Dots to the breaking point. Here Unity dips several times into the single digit FPS. However, it's still not bad for the number of physics objects on screen. So what does this all mean for Godot? Well, it really doesn't change the way that I use Godot. There are not a whole lot of situations where I need that many physics objects on screen at once. Furthermore, in my opinion, the ease of use of Godot makes up for its lack of performance in the 3D physics realm. Often I find myself using GDScript for many of my projects, even though it may be slower than using C Sharp just for its ease of use. For myself, Godot is fast enough for the small projects I work on. I do, however, look forward to the improvements that Godot 4.0 will bring, and my understanding is Godot 4.1 will bring with it NVIDIA PhysX support as a plugin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe to stay up to date with my next projects.